All right, so now that we've understood the basics of an atom, um, what we're going to look at is trying to understand the, the periodic table. All right, because um, understanding what we'll talk about the trends and why it looks the way it looks, but we want to understand the basics. If you ever look at a periodic table, you got these random um, numbers in here. You got a one, an H, hydrogen, one point zero zero eight, beryllium four, Be, beryllium nine point zero one two two. You got a couple twos up here. Like, what the heck does all this mean? All right, so that's what we're going to look at. Now, every periodic table is a little bit different. Uh, like these talk about like the electron configuration, which we'll we'll dive into that more later. But I want to just focus on like the basic stuff right here on what what uh, what each of these numbers means, how to read it, and how to really figure out uh, what exactly it's it's trying to tell you. All right, so that's going to be the purpose. Now, right, a typical periodic table looks like this: we have a number at the top, chemical symbol, element name here. All right, so what what this number at the top is? If you look over here, that's the atomic number. All right, and what that means is that 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 is the unique number that that sets that element apart. And the reason why that number is so unique because elements are defined by this number. And what that number is, if you guys remember from the basics of an atom, that atomic number is the same as the number of protons. All right, the number of protons can change. Excuse me, if the if the number of protons are what identify an element. All right. The number of protons, if it's a different number of protons, it's a different element entirely. All right, we're going to talk about how neutron, the atoms of the same element can have different number of neutrons. They can even have different number of electrons that we'll talk about through the bonding process. But if they've got a different number of protons, then it's a completely different element. All right, and so the atomic number is the same thing. It looks like if that's a minus, I should change that. It is the same, oops, that's a plus. There it is is the same as the number of protons. So that number up top, that's called the atomic number, which is the same as the number of protons. The atomic symbol, all right, once again, we talked about this already when we did our last unit. Every atomic symbol starts with a capital letter. Sometimes it's followed by a lowercase letter, but it's never two capital letters. So when we start talking about bonding, remember CO, C with a capital O next to it, capital C, capital O, that's carbon monoxide. Capital C, lowercase O, that's it's cobalt. All right, that's, a, that's an individual element. So that does matter, all right? So if you write, um, if it's supposed to have a capital letter and a lowercase letter and you write it with two capital letters, that's wrong, all right? So make sure that you're very particular about that. Then the element name's right there. And then this down here, that bottom number, is the average atomic mass, all right? And now 15.999, you might say, what, where's that come from? All right, I'm going to explain the atomic mass, but basically what you need to know is that's a weighted average. The atomic mass is how... Um, obviously massive that atom is. And if you guys remember back to the other video, it talked about how a proton and a neutron are about the same size. All right, they make up the nucleus of an atom. Electrons are so small, we don't even count them. It would take like 1,800 electrons to equal one proton. So, so even though an electron does have mass, we consider that mass to be negligible. All right, so when we talk about the mass of an atom, what we're really focusing on is the protons and the neutrons. Remember, that's what's in the nucleus of the atom. That atom is that dense nucleus. Most of an atom is empty space, but it's got a really dense nucleus, and that's the protons, where the protons and the neutrons are at, and that's what we factor into the atomic mass. Do not factor in the electrons. So the basics of an atom is made up of three parts, proton, neutron, electron. But when we talk about mass, we don't care about the electron. The electron is so small, it's whizzing around on the outside, we don't care. We don't count it when we talk about the with the mass because it's just so small. All right. So that's what these numbers are. That number is the number of protons. This number down here is the number of protons plus neutrons. And the reason why this number is 15.99, you're like, how does it have 0.999? What it is is it's a weighted average. Okay. So what that's telling you when it when you see a number that's closer to um, like 15.99, that means most oxygen because this number can't change. Remember. That, that is the number of protons. I said the number of neutrons can change. It's called an isotope. Protons can't. So most oxygen atoms in the universe have eight protons and eight electrons. All right, 99% do. But there are more than 99%. There are a few that have eight protons and seven neutrons. All right, but that number is so insignificant, so it takes that average and says most of the time oxygen has, has an atomic mass of 16, but there is a rare occasion where it'll have 
a time for mass of 15. All right, so that's where that 15.99 comes in. All right, and so if you see like the periodic table, it'll say like 9.0481. You know, what that's saying is that it's 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 rare to have. Um, yeah, in this case, it's rare to have an oxygen where it has eight protons and, and seven neutrons, but it does happen. All right. So basically, most of the time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round up to the more common, the more common isotope that it is. So in this case, I would say 16. All right. And I'm going to explain what, how we figure out parts of an atom. All right. There's two acronyms, or I guess you could call it one ape man, I guess you could say, is uh, two things I want you to remember when we're talking about when we're looking at a, a periodic table. So ape, it stands for the atomic number is the same as the number of protons, which is the same as the number of electrons. All right, because if you guys remember, protons have a slightly pot, they're not slightly, they have a positive charge. All right, protons have a positive charge. Well, for an atom to exist in its neutral state, it's not slight, it's not positive or negative, it would have to have the same number of protons as it has electrons. Okay? And so it'd have to have the same number of positive charges as it has negative charges. All right, so for an atom to exist in its neutral state, so the example we gave earlier was oxygen. Oxygen has eight pro the atomic number is eight, so it has eight protons. And for oxygen to be neutral, it would also have to there, therefore have eight electrons, because electrons, if you remember, are negative. Protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral. It's exactly what it sounds like. Neutrons are neutral. All right. And so protons are positive, P P. Makes sense. And then electrons are negative. Now the negative there is you think neutral negative. And don't do that. All right. Neutron sounds like neutral. It's neutral. It does not have a charge. So ape, if you can remember ape, that will help you. Because if I ask you how many electrons does this atom have? Well, the atomic number, the same as the proton, which is the same as the electron. And then the next one I want you to remember is the man. Ape man. All right, and this gets a little confusing because the mass number, that's what's given you on the bottom, minus the atomic number will equal the number of neutrons, okay? So if you can remember, ape atomic number is the same as the number of protons, which is the same as the number of electrons because we want our positive and our negative to be the same. And then the MAN acronym, or whatever you want to call this, if you think of the mass number, that number at the bottom of the periodic table, now sometimes it's in different spots, the bigger number, subtract that from the smaller number on the periodic table, that will tell you how many neutrons you have. All right, so in the case that we had with, uh, with oxygen, in this scenario, we have eight protons. Like I said, I'm always going to round up to the nearest number when I talk about average atomic mass, so say 16. So if this has 16 protons and neutrons, this number up here tells us how many of those are protons. So if it's 16 protons, neutrons, 8 protons, just subtract those two to get the number of neutrons. All right, so to figure out the number of neutrons, you just subtract the bigger number on the periodic table minus the smaller number. All right, so you can find all the basic parts of an element by looking at the periodic table. This number will tell you the number of protons and the number of electrons. And then if you subtract those two numbers, that will give you the number of neutrons. So you can find all the basic information out about an atom, all the basic parts, how many it has, just by looking at the periodic table and knowing how to read it. Okay, so a typical oxygen atom, to recap, has eight protons, has eight electrons, and then 16 minus eight, it also has eight neutrons. Okay, so it's eight, eight, eight. All right, so that's how you read the periodic table, uh, the basic information off the periodic table.